Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is Debs. I'm a paralegal and I'm here to react or make a video, a further video about the Diddy case. So I guess there's been an update and I will say that I was inspired by a video that I just watched on Popcorn Planet where he spoke with a lawyer and he kind of explained a little bit more about the case that I didn't know. I will link that video down below and I'll kind of discuss what I think as well. But yeah, let's get into it. So there has been a change in the judge um, of the Diddy case. And um, I guess, yeah, he's trying, I guess, for the third time to get bail. And um, so here it says, uh, this is a, I'll put a link it down for this article as well. But it says, Sean Diddy Combs claims feds concealed evidence that it refutes obstruction of justice allegations in sex trafficking case. I will just start off by saying it's not possible to hide evidence that proves that he didn't obstruct justice because the assumption is that you wouldn't obstruct justice. It's up to that it's up to them to prove that he did obstruct justice. So it would not make sense. There's no such thing as evidence proving that he did not do it. So um, let's just get that out there. Just get that straight. Okay, let's carry on. It says, putting the feds in the spotlight for alleged shiftiness. Oh my God, that's, that's rich. Sean Diddy Combs is making a third attempt to get out of jail while he awaits trial on sex trafficking and other charges. Just like before, the Grammy winner is putting up a $50 million bond and making a lot of home detention pledges, but now stepping up to another court. Coombs is accusing the government of playing fast and loose with evidence when it comes to claims of obstruction of justice and witness tampering on his part. Now, if you watch the previous, uh, technically I think it was split up into two videos, but um, basically the government D DEA I think you might call it in the states they even said in their their thing that they're keeping their evidence very close to their chest uh, but that rest assured that there was a lot of it and they mentioned specifically due to the fact of witness tampering an obstruction of justice and past you know experiences of that having happened and so that's really the reason why they didn't reveal it and so it goes on. The government's arguments about the risk of obstruction were based on speculation, resting mainly on untested allegations about communications with witnesses in civil cases and communications initiated by supposed witnesses and not Mr. Combs, says the rapper's just filed motion from pretrial release to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second District. Notably, search warrant affidavits disclosed to the defense on October 7, 2024, which two days ago, confirm and adds the filing with a thick redaction to the rest of the sentence. It continues, but during its proffer to the court, the government concealed this fact, which completely undermines its claim that the timing of the contacts with the witness in September 2024 suggest obstruction. Okay, what I will say here is... They're, they would not say that he did it unless they did not have proof because that's how it works in law. Like, they're, they're not going to say that he had... So, uh, so basically what they're claiming is that there is um, some kind of attempt at reaching out or contacting the witnesses last month regarding, like, obstruction. They wouldn't say that unless they had proof. And the fact that he was able and if that and if that is the case and they can prove that that actually makes it worse and more incriminating because that says that how would he have known who these witnesses were unless there was actually something that occurred and or he has a mole in like or intel feeding him these stories which i think probably a little from col well, column A, column B. Uh, because what this lawyer was saying is that when he was arrested, I believe, in New York City, they arrested him, but he was saying, 
oh, I was going to surrender myself the next day. How would he have known that he was going to be arrested to such an extent that he needed to surrender? And there was gonna, he was going to surrender himself the next day? So to me, that really says that he must have some kind of mole or something feeding him this information. And I mean, of course, I can't prove it. This is just my opinion. Allegedly, I would think it's probably more plausible that he was looking to skip town the following day and they probably found out and that's probably why they came at him apparently really hard and fast and that's probably why he was at a if I remember correctly a hotel I'm not sure but that's not here neither here nor there that would make more sense to me because it didn't make sense oh I was just gonna surrender the next day a how did you know that they were coming to arrest you and b just it's a little convenient almost doesn't count you know what I mean Oh, well, like, mm, like it, uh, uh, to me, uh, my opinion, allegedly, there must be some kind of mole or something or, you know what I mean? Because, or he just knew that the time was running out. I mean, my opinion, allegedly, maybe he was going to make a run for it. And maybe that's what made them come at him first because, you know, something's got to give. And it says here, like previous pretrial release attempts by the defense, Combs' appeal team say that their client poses no flight risk, despite so-called exaggerated rhetoric from the feds. Contacted by deadline, SDNY U.S. Attorney Damien Williams' office had no comment on the very serious claims by the defense-led Alexandra A.E. Shapiro of Shapiro Arado Bach, LLP. Oh, shit, where'd that go? Arrested in New York City on September 16th on charges for from the Justice Department of racketeering, sex trafficking, and transportation to engage in prostitution. Coombs failed on both sep September 17th and 18th to obtain plea release. The self-declared billionaire defendant has entered a not guilty plea. Also, if he's a billionaire, what the fuck is like 50 million mean to him? It's like Trump change. I'm like, I'm sure, it, especially this has been going, I think, what was it? They raided his house in like, what, six months ago ish. And this has been allegedly going on for like decades. So I'm sure he's likely thought out some kind of escape plan. So 50 million is chump change to him. Anyways, it says, he is uh, declared not guilty plea. However, if found guilty by a jury of his peers, he would face the rest of his life behind bars. Currently, Coombs is sitting in infamously, infamously harsh Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. As well as this criminal matter, Coombs has been hit by a plethora of civil actions spanning decades of alleged abuse. While the plaintiffs in those civil cases range from past bandmates to one of the producers on Coombs' most recent love album and more, there appears to many commonalities of drugs, violence, videotaping, financial and career pressure, and enablers to the filings. The cascade of accusations against Coombs followed the short-lived case against the Bad Boy Entertainment founder in November 2023 from ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura, which settled within 24 hours with a supposed $30 million payment to Ventura, even after Coombs' lawyers cried shakedown. The allegations from the Mean You singer mm. count assault, abuse, violence, and vindication, uh, vind sorry, pff, vindictiveness from the rapper among them. Coombs denied all of Ventura's climb claims at the time, but after the 2016 security fo footage of Coombs beating Ventura in the halls of an L.A. hotel emerged on May 17th, the last night singer took to social media in haste to apologize for his inexcusable behavior. In the matter of today, officially filed, matter of today's officially filed appeal, the next step is a response from the government and then a court hearing to follow. While all that transpires, a status conference is still in the books for October 10th in the case of newly minted Judge Aaron Subramanian. Uh, because Coombs did not waive his right to a speedy trial in a court appearance last month, Judge Subramanian replaced Judge Andrew L. Carter Jr. October 3rd as the judge overseeing Southern District of New York case. Still, with the appeal the defense put forth Tuesday, it will be unlikely this case goes to trial before 2026. Okay. So... 
I also think that um, this will also open the doors of him potentially having more information about these witnesses. Uh, for example, if they're claiming that he contact him or one of his affiliate associates contacted the witnesses back in September, which I do understand there is a right for him to challenge that or to respond to that. So it would potentially put it into a um, position if he hasn't seen already who these people are, what the witness is. So that could potentially put whoever those witnesses are in danger or who, whatever the case may be. So either way, I, it's could not be good for whoever, like say that I truly think they must have proof in order to say that. And I guess by him challenging that, it would probably put the court into a position to have to reveal that. Although I do note that they have sealed the evidence and it could be that they are, op they, it's potential that they could operate with under Jane Doge for now. I'm not sure, especially since I'm from Canada, but I truly think, my opinion, allegedly, there must be some kind of mole or something for him to, or he just knew who he did dirty and he breached out to them. Could be possibly both. And um, I guess, I think, to my opinion, it just makes it even more incriminating because how would you know who the witnesses were if they didn't tell you their names? Because that's what he's saying. It's not possible that I could have messaged them if you didn't reveal their, their names. But I don't, I doubt that they would say that if they didn't have proof. So if they can, in fact, prove that he was messaging those witnesses before, it actually is more incriminating. And yeah, I don't know. There's actually another ca or case document I found of like a man, or I'm not sure the age, but he sued uh, Diddy for sexual abuse or assault and Diddy no showed so to like there was a default judgment against Diddy in favor of the guy which to me means I mean he literally no show no ju no lawyer no like just default judgment in in favor of the guy making the allegations so that's pretty red, a uh, big red flag, and I think I'll read that pretty soon here. But yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? Let me know your thoughts down below, and I will continue to follow this case and keep you guys updated. And thanks so much for watching. Catch you in the next one, hopefully. Bye.